Hey guys, so many of you who follow this channel will know that I do a series called Battle of the Browsers where I talk about various different browsers that are available for the Linux desktop and their merits and problems with them and how they line up against the competition and um, it's a pretty decent and successful series on this channel. A lot of discussion about the kinds of ways we engage with the internet. So I today have decided that I'm going to do a spin-off uh, of that particular series uh, where I take a look at various RSS readers uh, and sort of assess uh, their quality and how they stand against other RSS readers. Now, for those of you that don't really know what RSS is, and um, I don't know how many of you there would actually be, uh, RSS is basically the is a proto is a protocol that um, takes websites and blogs and anything that has like a news format and then standardizes it into um, into a protocol so that you can then read that website along with other websites in other applications. So what that can effectively mean that you can subscribe to just about any website with a news feed and then you can all read it in one sort of handy application sort of almost like uh, like a newspaper or a magazine except you get to choose what um, what goes into it. So I'm going to take a look at three different RSS options today, but that is far from a complete list. Um, but without further ado, let's get on to the first one. This is Liferia. Now this is probably one of the most well-known RSS readers available for Linux. Um, I think it's built against GTK3. It certainly feels like it is. Well, certainly GTK+. Plus. Uh, it's got a website and everything that goes along and gives you FAQs and more information about it. This is the example feed that they give you. Uh, and as you can see, um, it's pretty standard for those of you that are familiar with RSS um, interfaces. You can have a look at various, you know, you, so, so basically what happens is if you wanted to subscribe to a website, you'd get the URL of the website, you would then add a subscription to the feed, you would then copy and then, well, then you'd paste the URL of the website there. There might be some advanced options. And then it would basically become one of these articles on the sidebar. And then what you can do is you can then read all of the categories as like a continual segment like this, or you could even read them all. Now, I actually had to set this little bit up, but you can actually set it up so that folders can uh, list out various articles or, or RSS items according to any kind of criteria you can think of, whether or not they include a word in the title or anything like that. And you can have like custom folders. So for example, this one down here just covers everything that I haven't read yet. The one at the top here just covers everything read and unread. So that's quite good. Uh, it seems pretty fast and snappy, just like every other GTK application. It's completely local, which is great. So if you um, really only use maybe one device for, um, for for reading all of your websites, then this might be it. Or if you just want to, to use it for a specific thing. So for example, if you're... Um, you know, like RSS isn't just necessarily for, for recreational reading. There are many websites and um, and software um, projects that will then release their latest news out in an RSS uh, feed as well. Um, the people that manage my, my domain registrar, they have an RSS feed that tells you whenever any of their servers are going down. So RSS is, is a really good um, syndication tool. And, uh, you know, so you can use it for just about anything. In fact, you could use it for things like status updates. So if you're part of like the GNU social network or like mastodon.social or, or any of those other open source social networks, uh, you can effectively subscribe to any person on any of those using RSS. You could subscribe to Tumblrs, Reddits. Um, you used to be able to do it with Twitter accounts, but you can't do that anymore. But for the, like, probably the majority of websites that have like, um, dynamic content you can really get an rss feed for it some uh, somewhere now sometimes it's easier than others some work better than others but for, for it, it's effectively an entire protocol an entire system developed to um to like well basically newsletters you know like rather than have like newsletters and updates emailed into your inbox and what i often find with that is is you'll, you'll have a combination of like personalized emails or you know newsletters and you can sort it within your email but i've always felt that email is like a really bad way to get reliable 
um, regular, broad, you know, sort of um, updates into your your mailbox because it's very hit and miss as to what websites support, um, you know, like email subscription. Whereas RSS subscription is so much more universal, and it pains me that so few people use it in general. So, the idea behind Liferia is that it's simple um, and straightforward and easy to use, rather than. Uh, feature rich, which is completely fine, like simple and straightforward and easy to use, like an RSS reader doesn't require, you know, it's not the most advanced piece of software going. So um, what I quite like about Liferia as well is, so you've, you've, you've selected an article here and it, and it lays it out for you using its own style. So you can um, you can do that and it adds in the photos. But for example, if you want to see the website as it actually is with, um, you know, you can open in tab, and then it will open up the uh, the website proper, I believe, although it is taking its time. Oh, and my VPN has blocked it because it's got tracking. Well, oh, there we go. Ars Technica. There you go. And there you go. So you can actually like view the website as it is there and then, uh, and it kind of acts as a browser. So it's got plenty of. Um, of options as well you can uh, sort of have a good go at the preferences uh, check you know you can you can um, tell it how often you want to um, to check for new items you can set the default number of items per feed to save so if you want to keep your your cache uh, file size down if you want to you know keep a small footprint there's that you know so it gives you a decent amount of options even given that it's designed to be quite straightforward and quite um, quite basic and I would say this um, is really the the gold standard of RSS readers uh, and I mean gold standard is in like the actual proper use of it as in it's a good benchmark so you know we can we can take a look at other um, RSS readers and, and and if they're better than this that means that they're specifically quite good and if they're not as good as this then it means they're subpar this is this is like you know this is good this is what I might call par for the course for RSS readers a good solid RSS reader doesn't do a whole lot of stuff but if you really are just in the game of just reading Ars Technica from time to time you know you might pull it up once a day and just see what uh, what you've got there it's simple it's easy it's straightforward it's open source it's readily available and it's in the repositories of every Linux distribution I have used as a as a significant daily driver so yeah, I think it's it's definitely worth a look. Okay, so the uh, second RSS reader on the um, on the list is Blam. Now Blam is 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 a much more like lightweight and simpler one, uh, and, and as you can see here, I've imported all of the same uh, subscriptions that I had in Liferia into Blam. Now the thing about Blam is it, it doesn't appear to have been updated in quite some time, so it. It seems like the project has has reached a degree of, you know, well, well, you know, it's, it's basically it's, it's rounded off. Like it's not an incomplete program, um, but it it is not. It's no longer being maintained. But that being said, like simple and this is a very very simple, very very straightforward program. Much more um, simple than Liferia. So programs like this often don't need and have the urgency and the you know the essential. Uh, the essential urgency to to update as often as perhaps something more complex. However, the big issue with Blam, and you may have already noticed it, is that there are many subscriptions here that aren't updating. The reason for that is because of how it accepts the URLs of RSS feeds. So, for example, with Liferia, you can just put in, so if you wanted to add a new subscription, you could just um, enter a website location and then the feed auto discovery will will work it out for you. With Blam, you need the specific URL. So unless it gives you a specific, you know, RSS feed URL, uh, then then it's then it's going to have some kind of trouble. That doesn't necessarily disqualify it as being a good RSS reader, but it does make adding something new uh, a little bit more of a pain. But it is more, it is more lightweight. There, you know, it is a smaller file. You know, it is smaller on the system in terms of its uh, in terms of its disks. You know, the disk space that it takes up. It's not bad, but it is that that one thing where it's it's no longer being maintained. So so there's no, uh, ex it's, you know, it's unlikely that this feature will you know will be brought in the feed auto discovery, which isn't a particularly complicated feature as far as I'm aware. It just looks at the source code of the page for an, for a, a viable RSS 
URL. But there you go. Um, I wouldn't recommend it unless, in, unless you you know you're willing to. Maybe you don't. Maybe you only subscribe to things with explicit RSS URLs, um, or, or you know maybe it suits a specific purpose. So for example, if you only use RSS, or if you want an RSS reader that only checks the RSS feeds of maybe you know particular. Uh, you know, registrars or companies uh, or servers or whatever to, to monitor for things like server downtime and, and, and whatnot, then that R this this simple RSS reader will probably have you covered there. If you're just looking for something that's a basic um, status update, then th th this will do the job. It doesn't take up much space. It's lightweight, works well. It's just that, that issue that I, I was uh, telling you about. And then the final one today is Feedly. Now, this is probably the most well-known out of the lot. It's the web-based application. So as you can see here, I've got it in my uh, web browser. This by far is the easiest, most straightforward to to get along with. However, the big catch is that it's, well, it's um, online and it's a, it's a web service. So if you have uh, issues with privacy surrounding that, I would advise against it. So if you, I mean, if you're just reading your Ars Technica and your Flux blog and all this kind of, you know, um, that's one thing, but then you know if you know if if you want to protect yourself, you know if you want to protect your privacy, then you definitely want to go down the life area offline route, really, because you are entrusting companies like Feedly to to aggregate all your content for you. So you know it depends what your expectation and requirement of privacy is as to whether or not Feedly will will get you covered. Feedly is great though. It's basically it allows you to subscribe to any website ever, right? Uh, and it's dis it's auto feed discovery ability. So you can just put a website in there is really good. Like I don't think I've ever seen a website uh, that it can't aggregate into um, it, it, into it as a reader. You'll also notice that it's a bit more polished in terms of the aesthetic. So for example, I've got all of my my items up here, and again, I've also I've just um, imported in my sample feed from Liferia. So in all of these RSS readers, you can export all of your feeds and then import all of your feeds. So if you want to switch across from various RSS readers, it's a very simple process. Export your uh, OPML, I think the file is. Um, you know, export that, import it into another application. It's a very standard procedure, um, and, um, and it works really, really well. So it's, it's, a very, it's not like email, where you have a huge, big infrastructure uh, task ahead of you if you want to switch your email provider and your email servers. But, um, but with this, it's import, export, import, export. Uh, it could, you know, like there's, there's actually not, m well, I was going to say there's not nothing to say that um, an RSS reader couldn't treat it as just a file anyway, where you go file, open, uh, OPM, you know, select an OPML file, and then it will just bring up all the subscriptions in it. But there is, of course, you know, pulling down subscriptions from hundreds or sometimes in some case thousands of different feeds will just, it'll, pro it'll overload any reasonable system. So it looks good, though. This looks good. Um, so you can choose the title only view. This is the one that I tend to go with just simply because it just gives you the most information on a page at a single you know, glance. But there's magazine view if you want some maybe recommendations on the side. Uh, cards view if you want something a little bit more. There you go. This also themes like there is a lot of theming you can do on this. So look at you know there is uh, this is by this is the most customizable in the same way that it is also probably the most user friendly you can uh, sign up and log in with Google with an email address, so you can just do the username and password route, or I believe you can log in with Twitter as well. Uh, actually, I think we might be able to find out uh, if I just go down to uh, preferences, and then we've got logins. So yeah, there you go. So that's my current login now, and obviously, as you can see, I have set up a uh, disposable account for this. Yeah, so you can add a Google login, you can add a Feedly login, you could add a Facebook login, you could log in using Twitter, you could log in using Windows, and you can log in using Evernote. So it gives you a lot of options. Uh, if you just click Feedly, it will ask you for email and password, and there you go. So there you go. You got uh, you got plenty of you got plenty of options there. You don't need you know you don't need to link it to a to a social media account. There are sharing options available. So if I were to go into this, and I like how it, th this looks really nice as well. So it gives you the it gives you the website here. Now some websites um, 
only give you like the 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 introductory paragraph and then you have to visit the website um, to open it properly that's the case of the website I don't necessarily have a huge problem with that on the basis that like as you can see here there's advocate advertising costs that they kind of you know want to cover and therefore would rather that you go on the site specifically I can kind of understand that but it does um present the uh, this you know very nicely and and, uh, and a lot of blogs and a lot of websites of course they just give you the full 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 text in an, an RSS feed so I think that's about it I mean I could talk about feedly all day long because there are just so many features there is a pro version there's a pro version um where did I see that now oh there uh, and the pro version is five forty one dollars a month, which I think is far too much for for what is a very simple application to use. The only reason why I can imagine it being so much is because it probably takes a significant amount of bandwidth to pull down all of your subscriptions. But um, but anyway, if privacy is you know something you know you know if you can get uh, if 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 the if your uh, privacy concerns are satisfied with Feedly, I would generally recommend this from a stance of, of user friendliness, um, features, customizability, convenience. There is a Feedly app for Android and I assume for other mobile operating systems as well that, that's really, really good, right? It's not open source, but it's really good. Like it's just easy. It's straightforward, it's easy. So you can subscribe to any website just as easy as, you, as you'd subscribe to a YouTube channel. So I thought, uh, you know that's that's amazing and and you know feedly embraces this more than the others liferia tries but there there one you know occasionally uh, a particularly awkward website like for example uh, planet gnome here um so you know sometimes it doesn't always well sometimes rss urls change and and that's you know uh but sometimes as well uh i found that liferia Blam worst of all is, you know, but sometimes the um, Liferia's auto feed searching function uh, can trip up a little bit. But this, you know, this is like that happens like one in 20, whereas with Blam it happens like 80% of the time. So, so yeah, top recommendation out of this three would be Feedly. Um, but the big drawback, of course, is that it's um, online web service. Um, however, of course, the benefit of that is that you can then um, sync it to tablets and and phones and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, across multiple devices, this is, again, it's, it's a good option. And you get plenty of, um, you know, and the free and the free version of this is, is, is plenty good enough. I think the big difference between the free and the paid versions of Feedly is how quickly it pulls down your feed. So if you want news up to the second... Uh, then you might want to either look at Liferia or getting a paid subscription to Feedly because that way it'll pull down, you know, you'll get priority if you do it on Feedly. Um, Liferia is, like I say, it's the gold standard. It's it's a good, straightforward, easy to use, what you'd expect out of an RSS reader, RSS reader. It's, it is good. Um, it, I, I use Feedly, but if I didn't, then... Um, uh, then I would probably use this. Uh, Blam, not bad if you need something simple, straightforward, and um, and and are you know willing or able to get the specific RSS URLs of of all of the um, of all of the fee feeds that you need. So you know, in that case, if I've got a you know if I've, if I, if I've got a few, I don't know. Tumblers that I want to follow, or a few Reddits that I want to follow, then you know where the RSS feeds are standardized and readily available. Then maybe that might be something that I'd use. Maybe if I need a, you know, if I want a reliable feed update from um, from a, a you know a, a server, um, you know that, that spits out an RSS um, notification every time a, you know something goes wrong or everything, you know. Then yeah, for simple for the most simple and basic uses, Blam will will get the job done um, and keep your you, you know and infringe on your disk space um, the least. So those are my thoughts. If you have any recommendations yourself, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Um, it's been very interesting checking them out. I got to say, RSS uh, one of the most underrated um, like things on the internet. Like the number of the how you know the 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 number of people who don't use RSS and don't, aren't aware of it is 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 far too big. Like it's 
and and I think the reason is is because so many websites kind of want to uh, enclose you into their ecosystem. They want you to sign up for an account on on their service and read stuff you know that their subscribers and that their followers and that their users produce and you know there is this instinctive um sort of corporate tide that seems to want you know that seems to want to take people away from the open space um and and and, and take away choice from people and put people onto a onto a you know put people onto rails basically as it were so rss um just the protocol itself uh, gives people so much more choice and so much more freedom, and it effectively allows you to subscribe to anything. You could even use something like Blam or you know Liferia as like a status updater. So you know if you've got people on various different blogs or micro blogs, you know then it could uh, you know rather than having to you know sign up for an account for each one, you've got it you know one solid feed. And also with Liferia, and also you can do this with Feedly as well. You see, you obviously have customizations for uh, things like normal view here, so it looks a little bit more like um, Thunderbird, for example. But you've also got combined view, and that treats your RSS feed effectively as like a long. Oh, it's still loading up now. Actually, I'll tell you what. One of the benefits of uh, Feedly is that you don't actually have to wait for large amounts of articles to load up. Um, but yeah, if you go to like full article view. Then you've got just a, a solid stream of full posts, very similar to, to what you might uh, get out of something uh, something more social media-y. You can also, yeah, and like I said, there, there are share buttons available, I believe. I think I've turned them off. Yeah, there you go, down at the bottom here. No, I haven't turned them off on this one. So if you do want to share something via email or whatever, then you can do so. I, I usually turn those off because if I want to sh if I consider something to be so worthwhile that I want to share it to Twitter, I'm you know copying and pasting is fine. Like I, d I don't need I don't need that degree of 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 ease to share things. It makes it too impulsive. You you know every time you share something on on Twitter, you kind of want to take a couple of seconds to really just sort of empathise with your followers and and try and work out well is this something someone else wants to read? But but there you go. So anyway. That's enough of me blithering on. I'm going to leave you there. Thank you very much for watching. And if you are wondering what flag is on my desktop background today, uh, I will put a uh, link to it uh, on the end slide of this video. So you can check that out. And um, if I can remember, a link in the description below. So that's about it from me today. Uh, until next time, uh, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. And also, don't forget to leave your suggestions down in the comment section. Toodaloo.